Welcome to the dazzling world of Vegas Vibes Junction. I'm your host, Esmeralda Padilla Gould, your guide through the enchanting soul shaping the vibrant landscape of Las Vegas. In this spellbinding season, we extend our heartfelt appreciation to our esteemed sponsors, Mr. and Mrs. Francis and Carolyn Shing of Hawaii. Their unwavering support, combined with the fantastic collaboration with All Access Productions, add an extra layer of magic to our journey. A shout out to our incredible viewers on VegasPlus.us, VilmTV.us, VegasLiveTV.us, AmpleTheater.net, WCTV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Vegas5s.us, as well as those catching us on local TV channel KGNG 26.8 Las Vegas. Your support means the world to me, so spread the joy on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Las Vegas pulses with vibrant music, breathtaking performances, and electrifying events. As we showcase talented artists and dedicated individuals, let's immerse ourselves in the thrill. Join us for mega concerts and sports spectacles, filling the enchantment that crowns Vegas as the entertainment capital of the world. Vegas Vice Junction is your backstage pass to the incredible personalities shaping this city into a global gem. Dive into their stories and let's celebrate together in the extraordinary warmth of Vegas, now more dazzling than ever. In just a few moments, we'll be interviewing Mr. William Doc Waltz, a dynamic leader and candidate for the mayoral seat of Las Vegas. Hailing from Chicago, Illinois, Doc brings a wealth of experience in law and public service to the table. With a distinguished career that includes roles alongside influential figures like Harold Washington and Jesse Jackson. Doc is known for his unwavering commitment to inclusive governance and fiscal responsibility. Join us as we delve into Mr. Walsh's vision for Las Vegas and his plans to propel the city towards a brighter future. Get ready for an engaging conversation with Mr. Doc Walsh, so don't go away. Medical equipment provides top-notch quality medical supply equipment. Whether to rent or buy, Pure Medical Equipment and Supplies has it all. Pure Medical Equipment is committed to serve and give back to Southern Nevada. We deliver medical supplies and rentals to your door. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a privilege to welcome a true champion of public service and community empowerment. With a distinguished career spanning decades, he has dedicated his life to serving others and shaping positive change in our society. Hailing from Chicago, Illinois, his journey is marked by a relentless pursuit of justice, equality, and progress. As a dynamic leader, he has left an everlasting mark on the landscape of American politics. Having served alongside influential figures like Harold Washington and Jesse Jackson, his unwavering commitment to inclusive governance, fiscal responsibility, and social justice has earned him respect and admiration both locally and nationally. Today, we have the honor of delving into his inspiring journey, exploring the experiences and values that have fueled his passion for public service. Join me as we embark on a conversation that promises to illuminate the vision and leadership of one of <coughs> Las Vegas's most formidable mayoral candidates. Without further ado, let's welcome Mr. Doc Waltz to Vegas Vice Junction. Oh, thank you so much, Ezzy. I love that introduction. It's truly an honor to have you here with us. Thank and, you. And uh, truly, thank you for gracing us with it's your presence. It's my pleasure. You make me emotional. Oh, well, yeah. it's everything about yeah. you and more. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's all about. And I really find you uh, very kind and compassionate. And Thank I you. truly hope that you will win. Thank you so much. Election. I really appreciate that. And I hope we win too. And the most important reason is because we have a chance to embellish the things that are already Las Vegas and make them better, but also send us in a different path. So, yeah, enough about that. Let's talk about the fun stuff. Oh, please. Uh, <laughs> whoa. Tell us, what was the catalyst that uh, inspired you to pursue a career in law and public service? 
just the fact that I didn't know how to shut up when I saw somebody else being treated unfairly. Oh. I couldn't stop. I had to find justice for them. And it didn't matter who the person was oppressing them, I had to react. You know, it didn't matter whether it was a system or an individual or a parent or a teacher, I couldn't shut up. If the teacher accused the wrong person in class, I would stand up and say, no, he's not the one or she's not the one that did that. It was that person, you know, so it was in me. Wow, that is very admirable because mm -hmm. I have seen people being oppressed all the time and being mm -hmm. bullied and sometimes yeah. they could not defend themselves. Right. And when someone, even, just even one person who would stand up to that bully right. makes a whole world of difference to the life of that person and, you know, it stops. That's right. So um, <clears throat> one of the things that drives me now, I lost my youngest daughter, and I'm going to need some tissue. <laughs> I'm sorry. I lost my youngest daughter. She uh, had two master's degrees, and she was getting her doctoral degree in education. So she was studying in Brazil, and she caught bacterial meningitis and passed. And she was a go-getter. She was the mini-me, the political me. And um, so I continue on in her honor. I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh, oh it's wow. okay. God is good. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. I'm sure she's very, she's looking down from heaven Absolutely. and she's very proud of her dad. Absolutely. And I'm inspired by her every day. And my other children as well. My son um, is deaf in one ear, so he translates. He had the pleasure of uh, translating the Star Spangled Banner at the Chicago Bears game just a few weeks ago. So that was seen on national TV. Translate he meaning she, he sang? Uh, no, he actually does the sign, signing of it, but he does it in a very uh, musical. Oh, the signing. Musical, oh, that's mm -hmm, what I Musical saying. and, and uh, melodic way. So they honored him with that opportunity. And then my other daughter is a, a, a mother and a grandmother, and she, um, she's just a barn burner. You know, she's into human resources and helping people. So it's in the blood. Wow. And then I have um, five sisters and one brother and another brother um, whom we adopted basically because he lived in our neighborhood. We lived in an all-white neighborhood when we first moved in in 1966. And it wasn't a friendly neighborhood, but he was friendly. And we just became the best of friends, so he's like a brother. And my mother just turned 87, which is a blessing. Mm -hmm. So we were all together in Chicago for her birthday party. That's so, amazing. Yeah. How do they feel about you running for mayor of Oh, they love it. They've always supported me. And they know it's my passion to try to help other people. So that's what I do. Um, please, uh, can you share a memorable experience or lesson from your time working alongside influential figures like Harold Washington and Jesse Jackson? Oh, yeah. Working with Harold Washington was a blast. Um, I just, you know, felt the need to get involved as soon as he announced. I was in my second year of law school. So I took a leave of absence from law school at, at the end of that semester. And I organized the Lawyers Committee for Harold Washington, served as president of law students for him, and served as his assistant scheduler. And then I became his direct assistant. In that capacity, I had the pleasure of traveling with him locally, nationally, and internationally. Um, we went some of everywhere, and people loved him. And they would say two things. They'd say, there's Harold. And then they'd say, Chicago, rat, tat, 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 tat. So we knew we had to change that image. And we did. We made Chicago the city that works. So the most important thing that I remember about Harold was he taught me never take yourself too seriously. And so I don't. I don't take myself seriously. I'm thankful for every minute that I have and every opportunity to serve. One of the things we do, for example, is on Tuesdays, at 204 Master by the courtyard, we feed 400 to 500 people every Tuesday. And the thing for me is I get to hand them their food, which is packed by the ladies and gentlemen with love, and I get to tell them, I love you. Love to me means I care about you, I'm wanting your well-being, your justice, your value, your mercy, your goodness, and your grace. So I love everybody. Now that doesn't mean that I like everybody, but I love everybody. So it's a pleasure to be able to serve them. And then on Saturdays, we go down in the tunnel with Shine a Light, and we try to get those hardcore drug addicted persons out of the tunnels 
and get them into treatment at Crossroads. They can stay there for six months and they can leave if they want to leave. They're not held prisoner. And uh, if they stay through the program, they can then go to the next level. Oh, so well, I enjoy that. Very commendable. I love mm -hmm. that you are a humanitarian heart and your mission is to serve. Yeah. So yesterday I was telling you earlier off camera, uh, at 5 o'clock in the morning we were out counting the homeless. We were doing a census. I volunteered for that. So it was fun. I mean, we got a chance to talk to them again, get a chance to tell them, I love you. And that's important. And some of them say, I haven't heard that since my mother died. But we have to hear that. We're human beings. We all want love. I think uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's what really matters. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes is. a whole lot of difference when someone feels loved. Yeah, it gets you through your day. You can be having a rough day, and then all of a sudden, someone you love gives you a hug. It empowers you. Especially uh, someone who is homeless. Who That's right. Love. That's right. And okay. it's contagious because then they learn to say to one another, I love you because it felt good for them to hear it, so they want to make someone else feel good. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day, making other people feel good. Well, thank you for being a good example to them. Thank you. And showing them how it should be. Thank you. I appreciate that. How has your background in law shaped your approach to governance and leadership? You know, <clears throat> one thing it teaches me is to study hard. I went to IIT, Illinois Institute of Technology, Chicago, Kent College of Law. And I was the only black in my section out of 90 students. It's a Jewish law school. There was another section that also had 90 students, and we had six blacks in that section. But I was the only black in my section. So I was isolated, in a sense. But that made me study hard, because law is a study that uses a Socratic method, but it's also a study where it's a surprise. You don't know when the professor is going to call on you to recite the case so you have to be ready and you have to be prepared to establish a position and defend that position even against the entire class. So I did really well with that and then in the moot court competition it's a competition between freshmen and sophomores in law schools and so you go and you argue a case just as if it were a real case in a courtroom and I finished third in that competition out of all the students who were freshmen and sophomore. But Professor Brill recognized me at the banquet and he says if he weren't black, he would have won it all. So racism is a factor <clears throat> and that's something that I've always get, dealt with, but I don't let it hinder me. I don't get hung up on it because personally, I don't really see race. It doesn't matter to me what color mm -hmm. person It's just it is. a color of skin. Yes, that's all it is because at the end of the day, we're all the same. Yes, we're all so, children of God. We're all God's children, made in His image. And that's what excites me. I tell people all the time, I wish I'd been called to preach. But I wasn't. I was called to do just this. And I don't believe that I get a day off. I don't believe that I can ignore other people's problems and just go off, you know, into an island in my mind or in a, phys to, in a physical sense. I believe that that's what we're called to do in the olden days, the prehistoric days. You had to hunt to eat every day. You didn't have a day off. Every day of your life, you had to hunt. And you have to serve. You, you have mentioned, what, what, what do you think is your God's calling? What do I think? And, and my vocation is to fight for people who can't fight for themselves. And I don't mind. I love it. I'm thankful. I want to empower them. I want to end homelessness. That's important to me. And there are solutions. People think that all homeless people are the same, that they've wasted their lives and thrown their lives away. No. Some of them might have made bad choices, but many of them were forced out of their home for various reasons, no fault of their own. Sometimes a landlord just said, I'm not going to renew your lease because I'm going to sell this property. I have a family member that wants to live here and they were forced out, might not have had sufficient credit or sufficient income to get another place, so they're sofa surfing. But they're responsible human beings who are trying to fulfill their life's goal. So we can't ignore them. So we got layers of homelessness, and I, that's what I try to teach. There wasn't always a homeless problem. We now have a burgeoning homeless problem, not just here in Las Vegas, but in America many more people that need to be homeless are homeless and if we'd all do just a little bit more fewer people would suffer. Why do you have a soft spot for them? Um, because it could be me 
and it could be you, and it could be the next person. And if we ignore them, we're gonna be ignored when it's our turn. You never know. Most people are two paychecks away and one bad decision away from being homeless. Sometimes it's people who are just really trying to have a little bit more for their family, so they um, invest in something. Like a lot of people invested in crypto, expecting that it would give a big return. Well, it didn't for a lot of people. Some people got scammed. So they invest and then it doesn't go right and they can't pay the rent. So they're out. It doesn't matter. You know, you listen to people in Hollywood and most of them have a story to tell about being homeless, sleeping in their car. Well, fortunately, they had a car to sleep in, but that's what happens when you follow your dreams. You take a chance, but we have to also reward people who follow their dreams and give them the support they need to make certain that they don't fall off the cliff. And our homeless people have fallen off the cliff, but it's primarily because we focus in Las Vegas on service rather than on providing actual stable housing. And there is a way to do that. The money is available. We just have to adequately uh, pursue it. I really hope that homelessness will eventually be gone and mm -hmm. we can help all these people. Yeah, because there was a time when we didn't have it. People think that, oh, it's just, you know, part of the furniture in the house. No, it's not. We don't have to have homelessness in our community. There are solutions, and we have solutions, and we're gonna address those throughout the course of the campaign. That's amazing. Thank you. As a candidate for mayor, how do you plan to leverage <clears throat> your experiences and expertise to address the challenges facing Las Vegas, like homelessness? Oh, that's very good. And homelessness is one of those things when we get people to understand homelessness, just like people rescue dogs, people will get engaged because people care. They just want to know that they're not wasting their time on an entity or a body that also doesn't care. They want people to meet them halfway. So we're going to help people to do that through the culture of understanding. The other things that we want to do is we want to make certain that we keep the casinos and keep them lively and active and continuing to grow, but we also want to transition Las Vegas from just an international tourist destination into a safe and secure world-class city that is carefully designed to ensure the prosperity of every single resident and leave no one behind. We have the resources to do that. So what does that mean? Yes, we want our casinos to do really well. We want dining, and we also want to make certain we continue to have entertainment. We have the best in the world. This is Las Vegas, and people come here for that. But now you can gamble most anywhere. So there are fewer, fewer people coming to Las Vegas, even though there's a whole new group of people coming, but some of the people who used to come don't come anymore. If those people would come, we would be overrun all the time. But you can't just rely on that, and the, the pandemic showed us that. You also have to have another economy. So you have to diversify your economy. That means you have to have multinational corporations that are doing business here and developing products, goods, services, resources, and tools, and putting those things into the stream of the national and global economy and bringing new money, jobs, and opportunity back to Las Vegas. You see, the production goes on no matter what the pandemic. And there will be another pandemic, chances are. So we have to prepare for that. So I want to make certain that we have a very balanced economy. On a lighter note, yes. I've heard about Bernie Mac. Yes, he was one of my classmates in high school and he drug me into comedy kicking and screaming because I'm pretty good at helping people manage their careers and manage their businesses. I have a reputation for that. So Bernie Mac, his name is Bernard McCullough. He was my friend when we were 14, and he wasn't funny back then. He loved to play basketball and play funnier, baseball. funnier, you or him? Uh, he was probably funnier, <laughs> but he didn't show it. You know, he wasn't the class clown. He was methodical, and he was a very interesting person because he, um, he thought deep. Doc, why do you believe you should be the next mayor of Las Vegas? Because I'm the only candidate for mayor who will keep Las Vegas' promise. That's a commitment to public safety, public education, affordable housing, senior care, full employment, balanced economic development, equal access for the disabled, and when all fails, marshalling charity. And charity is nothing more than the act of giving unselfishly to those in need and expecting absolutely nothing in return. I have 
been trained by the best. I'm competent, I'm knowledgeable, I'm experienced, and I'm fully conversant with the functions, operations, and inner workings of municipal government. There isn't a candidate in the race who can hold a candle to me when it comes to policy and administrative decision making. I'm a leader and I've had the pleasure of helping people through storms. Las Vegas is at that point now where we need to prepare for the future. We need to look at what Las Vegas is going to look like in the next 15 years and I can set us on that path. I can tax less and provide more safety and services. I can diversify our economy while operating with integrity. And most importantly, I'll speak truth to power and tone down the divisive rhetoric and end the separation of the parties. I have that ability. So I think that's what I'm called to do. And more importantly, you have the heart to serve. Yeah, that matters too. Mr. Doc Walls, the floor is yours. Please uh, oh. address all our viewers. What would you like thank to convey? You. Yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for all the things that they do to help other people. It doesn't matter if it's structured or unstructured. Those spontaneous acts of kindness reverberate and other people then pay it forward. So we have to continue to do that. And if there's anything that I could uh, ask anybody to do is be mindful of that. See, we can't police our way uh, into safety. We have to develop a culture where people respect people and property. And when we teach our children that, and when we begin to do that, we'll be a much better society as a result. Most importantly, we'll be a safer society. So when I talk about helping the homeless, it's not just altruistic. Part of it is selfish, because I know that we're only as strong as our most vulnerable resident. We're only as safe as that person, because vulnerable people have the potential to do catastrophic things. So we want to make everybody viable to improve the safety of Las Vegas. As we wrap up our conversation with Mr. Doc Walls, I'm reminded of the power of vision, determination, and community. Mr. Walls' passion for service and his unwavering commitment to building a brighter future for Las Vegas serve as a beacon of hope and inspiration for us all. Remember, change starts with each and every one of us. Let's harness the energy and momentum generated by today's discussion to drive positive change in our city and beyond. Together, we have the power to shape a future filled with possibility, opportunity, and prosperity for all. We thank you, Mr. Doc Waltz, for sharing your insights, your passion, and your vision with us today. To our viewers, thank you for tuning in to Vegas Fest Junction. Remember to stay informed and engaged in the upcoming mayoral election, as it's our collective voices that shape the future of our city. Let's continue to dream big, work hard, and strive for excellence in everything we do. With unity, determination, and unwavering resolve, there's no limit to what we can achieve. Until next time, keep dreaming, keep believing, and keep striving for a better tomorrow. Together, we can make it happen. Until next time, God bless everyone. being a part of this accelerating episode at Vegas Vice Junction, where we delve into the remarkable life of Mr. Doc Walls. I trust his remarkable journey has sparked joy and inspiration in your hearts, just as they have in mine. Save the date and don't miss the next chapter on Vegas Vice Junction channel next week for another unforgettable story. Las Vegas, beyond its iconic strip and the library Fremont Street experience, is a haven for authentic individuals, musicians, entertainers, and those enchanted by the world of pageantry. If you're one of these exceptional people shaping Las Vegas into a global phenomenon, I would like to hear your inspiring story. Connect with me via email at vegasvastjunction at gmail.com. And let's showcase your narrative here on Vegas Vast Junction, whether in our studios or through an accelerating online Zoom interview. 
Before saying farewell, immense gratitude to our fabulous ward of sponsor, Ed Fontaine, nestled at the farm shops of Caesars Palace. Ed Fontaine awaits to fulfill their fashion desires, offering impeccable style, radiating sophistication. To explore their stunning collections, contact Ms. Anna Billings at 702-733-6205. Anne Fontaine welcomes you to our world of extraordinary fashion. And now, let's immerse ourselves in my favorite segment, the Vegas Vibes Closet. Discover a delightful array of health and beauty products personally endorsed by me. This week, I'm excited to unveil a special addition to the Vegas Vibes Function brand, the Vegas Vibes Cosmetics. With a stunning array of lipstick in various shades, Vegas Vibes Cosmetics enhances your natural beauty and empowers your inner glam. Each lipstick is meticulously crafted for exceptional color payoff, long-lasting wear, and a luxurious feel. Whether you desire a bold red for a night out or a subtle nude for everyday elegance, Vegas Vibes Cosmetics has the perfect shade for your unique style. Stay tuned for updates and exclusive offers on Vegas Vibes Cosmetics. Elevate your beauty game with our fabulous lipsticks, embracing the spirit and glamour of Las Vegas. Remember to follow Vegas Vibes Junction and Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram for the latest updates, announcements, and behind-the-scenes moments. Visit VegasVibes.us for more information and exciting content. Join our vibrant community and become a part of the Vegas Vibes Junction experience. Carry to the bounds as we embark on this thrilling episode of Vegas Vibes Junction, made possible by the generous sponsorship of Mr. and Mrs. Francis and Carolyn Ching from Hawaii. A heartfelt appreciation extends to our collaborator, All Access Productions, for imparting a unique essence to our journey. Thank you for being a part of this unforgettable experience. Stay tuned for more captivating interviews and stories showcasing the vibrant heartbeat of Las Vegas. Until next time, stay fabulous and keep spreading those Vegas vibes. I'm Esmeralda for the Gold. Thank you for watching. Mwah! Your kiss so sweet, only your smile can complete Now that I stand next to you Glad I was there to reassure you The sadness in your eyes I'll replace an eternal smiles So now I can't resist Holding on to commit Inspired to love you and keep you smile until the end of 